Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Gardner with uh, Lap of Love. I am coming from sunny Southern California this morning. Uh, it's about nine o'clock my time, uh, Eastern time about noon. So thank you for those that have um, put it on your schedule to see this live video today. Dr. Danny and I plan on uh, doing one of these live videos at least once a month. So um, this is my third live video and um, I'm really excited to see the the comments and the feedback and, and also how much it has, it has helped uh, so many of our families. Hi, Dr. Robertson. So I want to first apologize if you hear any crazy roosters because my neighbors got a ton of chickens and some roosters that are, that are causing a ruckus this morning. But I wanted to take the live video outside because my last one was, um, was inside and so I thought since it's a beautiful day not to rub it in any of my friends' faces that are out there suffering from the cold. But uh, thank you again for those of you that, are, that um, can make it this morning. And today's video, I wanted to focus on, um, on three things. First, about when to say goodbye, but, but not just when to say goodbye, because that was my last video, is, is assessing quality of life. But trying to say goodbye or planning to say goodbye to your, to your furry loved one on a good day. And that's really hard. Um, and I'm going to go into more details on that. So saying goodbye on a good day. Um, I'm also going to talk about anticipatory grief as well as, um, caregiver relief. And so those are the three main things I'm going to, I'm going to talk about today. And, um, so that hopefully it helps some of you, or if you know somebody that's going through this to send this video to them and, and help them as well. So before I get started, I know that uh, many of you have followed my uh, my story with Duncan, my 110-pound Doberman, who was the um, <clears throat> featured with me in the last video. So he was the stud muffin um, of many videos of mine and, and many pictures. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, he basically you know covered everything. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, so my boy Duncan, who was 13 and a half, and again, he was on our last video. I, um, I, let, I let him go two weeks ago. So <clears throat> that was really hard. And uh, so about two weeks after that video was posted. So I'm actually wearing sunglasses today on my head just in case I get a little teary eyed and I need to, you know, cover him up. But I, I'm sure I'll get through this okay. It's, um, <clears throat> it's been a little bit better now, but he was a a big part of my life and so I certainly miss him like crazy and that's why I thought I can I could speak to this um, these topics really well and hopefully help uh, help out some of you guys so first I want to talk about saying goodbye on a good day and, and and planning the goodbye if we can I know that a lot of times we're struggling with our pets that are nearing the end and we don't want to give up a moment with them we, we want to spend as much time as, as we can with them and and that's what we want as well. But but we want to make sure that we don't that we don't push it too far. And um, and picking the day is really hard. And I I had to kind of pick the day. And, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But in my last video, I talked about assessing quality of life. And and that's really important because when there comes a point, and if you can draw a line in the sand, it's really hard to do that. But if you can draw a line in the sand, and know that if we get near this or past this, then I definitely I want to I want to send them off in a good way. So that was my goal is to make sure that Duncan was um, was was having an okay day, a good day, if you will, when when we said goodbye. And that's that's hard. So first, um, I I wanted to make sure that I I assessed his quality of life every single day, and we have a lot of tools on our website to help assess that quality of life. And I and I drew a line in the sand. Now that line in the sand has a lot to do with the disease they have and the personality of the pet um, and the way that they're able to manage or at least live with their disease symptoms. So for Duncan, as you all know, he probably, um, you know that he had a lot of mobility issues. So a lot of our older guys are, are weak and wobbly. And so he had, uh, he was definitely struggling with that. And you know, that was of course declining over time. He was getting a little bit weaker, you know, each, each week. But the major problem for me was that he had um, a really bad heart. And so that, uh, that led to, hi Angela. So that led to um, heart failure. And then we kept, you know, coming in and out of heart failure and managing those, um, those medications was, was really difficult. But with heart failure, um, that will lead to respiratory distress. And so anytime a pet has struggled to breathe, they're struggling to breathe, to me, then, then that takes precedent. And so he could be 
wagging his tail and loving on me, which he, he, he did at the very end, that still doesn't mean that he's, um, that he was well. Hi, Manette. So we're talking about your boy, Duncan. Uh, so with his respiratory distress because of his bad heart, that was the, the most important thing for me is to make sure that, that he was, um, was not struggling to breathe. Because if any of you have ever had asthma or a respiratory event, then you know that's really hard because it messes with your brain too. Like, why can't I breathe? So when we said goodbye to him, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't in, in too much distress. So I wanted to plan a good day. Now, I travel a lot, so I speak around the country. So that's hard too, because I had a little bit of guilty feelings of traveling, especially towards the end when I, I didn't want to give up any precious time with him. So um, I planned actually to say goodbye to him about a week after I actually did, because I was going to be um, home from a trip and uh, have some time with him for a few days before I had to say goodbye and really I wanted kind of a weekend. Um, however, while I was gone, he started to decline uh, really bad. So we have wonderful Lapala veterinarians uh, where I am and around the country. And so I called one of them and said, hey, can you just stop by and, and see how he is? And so when she did, she said, you know, it's not good. So I um, left my, my uh, training early. I was actually at um, physical rehab course and so I, I decided to that it was more important for me to, to be with him so I left and flew home early and spent two nights home and uh, and said goodbye to him while I was here so I really wanted to be to be good and I didn't want to wait three or four days for me to come home so I'm sorry that my neighbor is now doing a lawn of course it's gonna happen so um, I wanted to say goodbye on the best day possible for Duncan so you know what does that mean? And, and, um, and for every pet, it's different. For every family, it's different. For me, I wanted him to be home. I wanted to, to be with him for sure. I wanted to make sure he had the best medications on board to feel comfortable and relaxed and, and without any discomfort or pain. Um, I wanted to make sure that his furry friends are nearby. So he's got uh, Sam, his, his dog's sister, and, and Mingo, his kitty sister. There's another cat, but she's like, she could care less about the family. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to make sure that everybody was, was there, um, even his furry friends. So, um, so I had to plan the day. And what I did not want is to wait for it to happen uh, when he was in distress and for me, to, and for me to, to feel rushed with it. And so many of you, um, it, it, you know, if you want to wait to the very end, you may have to bring them to an emergency clinic. And that to me is the worst thing. So I wanted to make sure I was home and that way I can, I can be present to do it. So I wanted him to go on a good day. Um, and, and that's hard because we know that we're in this roller coaster. So if any of you are taking care of a terminal ill pet now, you know that you're in the roller coaster phase where there's good days and bad days, good days and bad days. And gosh, it's really hard to say goodbye on a good day because you feel like you're stealing some good days from them. And I understand that, I understand that more than you can imagine. However, I just know in my heart that I might have stolen some good days, but I stole a lot more bad days from him. So I feel good with my decision that, that I wanted to suffer so he doesn't. And so I was gonna suffer you know, that day or two weeks later, it was, it was, it was always going to be a sufferable event for me. So I wanted to make sure that, that he wasn't, that he wasn't bad. And you know, while I was gone, he was actually worse than when I came home. He, he started to do better. Maybe he was happy to see me, <laughs> but that's just a part of the process is this roller coaster. Um, there's also a saying in human hospice that there's a flicker before the flame goes out. And so oftentimes we'll see a really good day and then they just do this free fall. And I did not want him to have the free fall. So um, that's like the roller coaster ride and then it's the big, the big dip. And I wanted to definitely prevent him from that. So the good day is, you know, what means the most to him and to us. And it is to be, you know, surrounded with, with, with love and comfort and, and to be at home. So what I did though is, um, I did a bucket list. So I know there's a lot of different um, ways we could do bucket lists. And I, um, I'm gonna have somebody post this in the comments right now. So this was actually Duncan's bucket list. And um, you know, I know that he can't be the way he was before. Listen, I can't be the way I was when I was 18. My bucket list at 18 is a lot different than it would be now and maybe when I'm 80. But I just wanted, so, so I know we're not gonna go for a long walk on the beach with Duncan. He could barely make it a few houses down the street. So, um, so I just, I kind of altered the bucket list for his current situation. So some things were enjoying a steak dinner and um, we did that three times. So he was very happy with that. 
uh, slumber party with me. So I, I slept out in the living room with him for, for his last two nights. He had visits from, from his girlfriends, so he was a stud. Um, and so uh, all my good friends came over and the veterinarians that, that worked with me always came to visit him. And so he got some good love in and we took some, some pictures. And um, so he just loved to soak up the sun and lay out in the sun. So these are, these are things that he enjoyed to do still. Um, and then one of our favorite things was, uh, was bringing, bringing home some In-N-Out for him. So here in California, we have uh, In-N-Out, which is a very famous hamburger joint. So he got some, some In-N-Out burgers and fries. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to write down a list of things that, that I wanted to complete with him before he passed. And so that made me feel a little bit better. These, these were not things like, you know, their bucket lists aren't meant to be depressing. So, um, it just made me feel good that I got to give him all those things that he loved before, before I had to say goodbye. Um, then my own bucket list is like smelling him as much as I could and kissing him as much as I could. That poor guy got so many kisses towards the end. Um, I also wanted to make sure I said I loved him a bazillion times. So there's been a lot of studies that, that say you will grieve more if you don't get the chance to say goodbye So um, and, and that I love you. And so I said I loved him like a lot. <laughs> he already knew that, but I had, to, I, had to, I had to remind him. So to me, that was my good day. And again, I know it's really hard to say goodbye on a, on a good day um, because you don't want to, you don't want to, to miss out and on anything good, but it is way better than to say goodbye on a really bad day. And so, um, because you're just gonna feel guilty about that. And that's one thing that, um, you know, as a veterinarian that goes to homes that, um, oh, hi, Linda, <laughs> your elderly kitties, we helped you with your kitties. Um, thank you for, for entrusting us with your with your little ones. Um, so. So what was, I, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so during, during a lot of passings of pets, I will typically hear two things that owners whisper or say to their pet. And that's either, I'm sorry, or thank you. And so for me, I didn't wanna say I'm sorry. I didn't wanna put him through so much that I felt guilty that I kept him around too long because I couldn't let go. And so I wanted to say, you know, thank you. And thank you for, hi Kim. My Jersey girl. So I wanted to make sure I said thank you to Duncan for all the protection he gave, all the love that he gave, all the silly, silly selfies that we took together, all the videos that we made. And so, um, and I was able to do that. I did not have to say, I'm sorry that I waited. And so that's just something to think about is, is when you say goodbye to your pet, are you going to be able to say thank you, you know, um, versus sorry. So I missed him and I still do. Uh, and I probably will forever. Um, the next topic I want to talk about is anticipatory grief. And um, so we all know that we that when we say goodbye to somebody that we love, you're going to have um, a, a, a massive amount of grief. But there is this anticipatory grief, which which is basically grief before the death happens, and um, that's a lot of to me. It was also anticipatory anxiety because I was so anxious about leave, about him leaving and saying goodbye and, and missing his presence in the house. So that is, I just wanted to bring this up because it's a very normal feeling. I had it. I know that a lot of our clients have it as well. So um, it really affected. I wanted to make sure I, I concentrate on the on the good moments because it could really affect your brain and you could start just, you know, you have two paths. You could you could wallow in that in that like grief process, or you could just say, okay, I'm gonna I like I have to say goodbye, but I want to make sure that that I enjoy the here and now. And so. Um, that's why I say I love you as much time as I can. I made my bucket list, so I tried to keep my mind off of the anticipatory grief that I had, but I wanted to capture every moment with him. So we did take a ton of videos, like I said, a ton of pictures, um, but I wanted to, you know, sniff him as much as possible. And, you know, towards the end, he kind of had a lot of toots that were um, not so, you know, so good smelling. And when he, when I saw him sleeping and when I saw him twitching, and feeling really comfortable and and um, and dreaming, I loved it. So I wanted to capture every twitch that he had as well. So, um, so anticipatory grief can be really tough. And so just um, just know that it's normal to have that, uh, and um, and kind of try to refocus on on what on what's going on right now. So another thing that happens is when you're dealing with your um, aging pet, there's a lot of caregiving that goes on, and so um, it is hard to. Um, not only physically help them, but um, you know, like with Duncan, 
feeding was a problem. So I had to make sure that he was eating. He was eating, you know, mostly, most of the time, but getting all his pills down him. He was not having it. So that was, that was difficult. Making sure I woke up twice in the middle of the night, making sure, um, making sure that um, he was comfortable. If I heard a noise, I'd wake up. So I was tired uh, when we went for walks. It was it was more of a challenge. Then I have another dog, so then I had to go walk her also separately. So uh, there's a lot of caregiving and a lot of stress that could happen and because you're also worrying, and I think worry is, is a bigger toll on us than we think. Um, so, uh, hi, Denise. I know, you miss your sassy. Trust me, I know. And so I miss my Duncan and, and you know, Duncan was a was a, a lady charmer down here, and I hope he's charming some angels up there as well, and and maybe your little one too. Um, and so that's um, so when you're when you're when you're helping these aging pets, it's a lot of work, and I and so there's caregiver fatigue, and that happens actually in in human hospice as well. So those that are taking care of them can get really tired. That's okay. I want to tell you, it was hard. It was really hard, but I would have done that for another 20 years, absolutely but it was hard. And so um, what, I, what I found afterwards though is caregiver relief. So after I let him go, I felt almost relieved. So let me step back for a second. The moment we said goodbye and I actually, um, I let him go myself. Um, and you know, I was anxious, anxious, anxious until the moment of, and I knew that like, okay, tomorrow, I knew I was gonna do it at three o'clock. And so I was gonna do it at three o'clock on a Monday and I knew three o'clock on Sunday, this is my last three o'clock. Sunday night, this is my last night. So, you know, Monday morning, this is my last morning. So like, you're just in a, in a mindset of swirlingness and, and, and grief. And so, you know, two o'clock, this is my last hour, it's my last half hour. So it's crazy the anxiety that you have. And I was just loving up on him the whole time. But the moment he passed, I actually felt relief and so it was it was a weight off my shoulders and that was not that grief was gone because grief is still here it was the anxiety was gone and so um, you know in a way you feel guilty because you're like how can I feel good that my dog just died like that I, you know you feel guilty about that and don't feel guilty because it is not that you're happy that they're gone or or that you're not missing them that's totally separate you just feel better that 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 you don't have to worry about them. Again, my anxiety was not so much the physicality of doing it, but it was the worry. And the moment he was gone, I thought, he's okay now. He's okay. He's up there doing something. He's barking at nothing in the clouds now, right? So, so the anxiety was gone. So it's not that I felt better. It's just I didn't have anxiety anymore. And so that's the anticipatory grief, what I like to call anticipatory anxiety. So that was gone. Am I still grieving? Yes, that's why I have my sunglasses on and I'm amazed that I'm getting through this without crying. So um, anyway, so I wanted to just, you know, kind of talk about those things. And again, I would have managed him for the next 20 years if I could have. But that night, and this is where I started to feel bad. So if anybody else also feels this way, let me know so I don't, I don't feel bad. But that night when it came time for, for dinner time, it was so easy. Like my, my, my one dog and my cat and my cat that I have left, they don't have any problems. It was so easy to feed them. It was so easy to let them out. It was so easy. And there was a moment that I was like, <gasps> like that, that was easy, you know? And in the morning when I woke up, breakfast time took two seconds. So, um, and then I was like, wow, it's so much easier. I got a full night's sleep. Uh, so it's this caregiver relief that you may go through and that's okay. Like, I didn't want to have to clean pee every day and make sure that when I woke up to see if his bed was, was wet and I didn't want him to be sitting in it, but I would have done it. I would have kept, I would have still done it today, but, um, it's okay to not, to not feel like, um, to not, to feel okay about not having all those chores to do. So, um, you know, cause it, cause it's a lot. And for Duncan, we always had to be home. Hi, Holly. Thank you for letting me know you felt the same way. So, Again, none of this means I miss him any less. None of this does. I just miss the chores and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I know that Sam, my dog, who's, who's still with me, she's 11, there's gonna be, time, there's gonna be some time soon that, um, that, that I'm gonna you know, have to take care of her. It's been almost a year and you miss. See, now there's the other funny thing too. Like, 
I now miss the chores, right? It's like giving me, it gave me purpose, let's say. And so, um, so there'll be times where it's almost like a ghost in the house where I'm like, oh, I gotta make sure this is ready for him or whatever. So, um, and putting his dishes away or putting his, his beds, he had like three big beds. And so putting those away, um, is going to be tough. I have not done it yet because my cat likes to sleep in them. So, uh, so I'm letting her have that for the moment. So I talked about saying goodbye on a good day. And that is what I want, um, most of you to, to think about if you're still wondering when is time is just, I don't want you to be at that free fall stage. And so, you know, it's okay to say goodbye on a good day. It's okay to say goodbye on a iffy day. I just don't want you to feel rushed to the emergency clinic or panicked when you call us and panicked for our vet to arrive because that means you're going to be concentrating on that and, and, uh, and not, and not, um, and not concentrate on them. So uh, Angela says you missed those chores and you would have done it for another 20, like 20, 40 years. To have him back, I would have done it. Um, so, I don't, so I don't mind. So anyway, think about a bucket list. When, um, when, when, when we say goodbye to pets at Lap of Love, all of our veterinarians help make a paw impression in clay. And so I did that of course for Duncan, but I did something a little special. And, and some of you try to be a little artsy um, I am not very crafty, but I tried. So I actually got this big uh, color palette from Michael's uh, craft store. And so it was big enough to fit, actually it really wasn't big enough to fit his paw on it, but after he passed, I, I dipped his paw in this and I tried to do ink prints, which are oh, like very difficult to do. Um, so I did like a couple of them. So I did an ink print, uh, which is, like I said, I had to do a couple because they weren't perfect. And now the perfect ones, wait, that was a blank one. The, so the imperfect ones, I can't get rid of them because it's his paw, right? So now I'm, now I'm stuck with like 10 of these because I, <laughs> cause I wanted perfection, but I can't get rid of imperfection. Um, so then what I did is I was doing his, I was doing his paw impression. And so after I dipped it in the ink, I then made another paw impression in clay with the ink on it. So, um, I had to do it twice though because it wasn't perfect so I got some swirls on the back. So I did it I did it twice and now I have a palm pressure with the ink. And so um, some people say, oh, is it like the rainbow bridge um, because of all the rainbow colors? And I say, no, actually one of my favorite things to do with Duncan is around five or seven o'clock depending on the time of the year was to go, um, uh, was to go for walks and watch the sunset. And so these just remind me of the colors of the sunset. So I wanted to do something a little bit special for him and um, and have a memory. So I've got now 10, <laughs> 10 paw prints that aren't perfect in ink. And then my, uh, my regular clay impression that we always do. And then my, and then my sunset colored ones. So, um, hopefully this helped some of you when you're, when you are deciding when it's time is to, is to make it a good day. Um, and again, I know that that stealing those good days are hard, but just remember that you're stealing a lot of bad days from them. And that sometimes can be even, um, more, uh, more of a relief afterwards. So I, I feel good that I, that I was able to, to provide him that, that good goodbye and make sure that he was um, feeling, feeling loved and, and um, feeling a lot of steak in his belly and, uh, and, and feeling, and feeling um, you know, and, and not feeling any anxiety. So I don't want them to have any stress. So again, he's up there now charming the angels as he, as he did down here, charming everybody down here. And so I'll miss him, so I'll miss him greatly. And, um, and if you're in that anticipatory grief stage um, right now, so just you know, know that you're not alone and that it's, um, it's okay. Uh, and, um, and just try to not concentrate on that grief, but actually concentrate on the, on the best parts of, of, of your pet right now. And um, because you don't want any of that time stolen from you. And so grief, grief will do that for, for you. So, um, and, just, and just for those of you that, that have that same feeling of relief afterwards, of like when Duncan passed and I felt relief afterwards and then I felt guilty that I felt relieved, that's normal too. And so it's not that you are giving up or you're doing something bad. It's, it's just you're relieved that they're okay. And, and that makes me feel a little bit better. So. I miss him like crazy. I miss his stink. I miss his fur. I miss his, you know, nosing me in the morning. And uh, I even, you know, I miss his farts. <laughs> and so I miss a, a, a lot of him, but I was blessed to have him. And so um, I know that some of you will, will have grief for months to years. And that's okay too, because the pets become, you know, a part of our, our story in life. And as I always say, the, in stories, the ending matters most. So I hope this was helpful for, for some of you. 
And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below and we'll answer them throughout the day and get back to you. We posted some, um, some tips on quality of life here uh, during this video. And so if you have any questions, again, don't, don't, feel, um, don't feel shy to, to reach out to us or call our support center. We have fantastic support center uh, people answering phones all the time. And many of them are actually certified in, in, in compassion. So um, you, can, you can talk to them even after you've lost your pet if you need some help. So uh, again, I hope this was helpful. And coming from Southern California, bye.